Did you hear that several NFTs worth hundreds of thousands of dollars have been selling for a fraction of their price on OpenSea? The error saw yet another wave of negative publicity crash down onto the world's foremost NFT marketplace. If you followed OpenSea's rise to dominance, you'll know that this most recent wave was hardly the first crash onto OpenSea's hull, and it looks like it might swallow the platform whole. And yet, OpenSea hasn't been capsized, run aground, or been dragged underwater by the weight of this damaging press. In fact, having been recently valued at $13 billion, and hosting more than 600,000 users, OpenSea appears on course to continue dominating the NFT space. In January alone, OpenSea reached a record $4.9 billion in trading volume. If you've ever wondered, how did OpenSea chart a course to such extravagant success, or will it be able to weather out this latest storm of negative publicity? Then keep watching, because today we're looking at the history of OpenSea and how a platform that nearly folded eventually found success in the NFT space. But first, my name is Trev, and here at CoinMarketCap, we are on a mission to make crypto accessible all around the world. And that's why we love making videos for you that are packed with information that are easy to understand and simple to share with your friends and family. So if you want something more than just hype and to actually learn about crypto, then make sure to hit the subscribe button right now and to turn on notifications so you're not going to miss out on our new videos. And let's learn together about the history of OpenSea. It seems like every day we see another celebrity either buying a Bored Ape NFT or launching their own NFT collection. From socialite Paris Hilton to legendary boxer Mike Tyson. Corporations too, like Taco Bell, Budweiser, and the NBA are trying to get in on the action, and for good reason. Bloomberg estimates that at the end of 2021, the global NFT space had grown from a tiny niche into a gargantuan industry worth $40 billion. And right at the center of it is OpenSea. So what is OpenSea? When measured by user base and sales volume, OpenSea is by far the largest marketplace for trading NFTs. It hosts several of the most coveted and costly NFT collections including the Bored Apes Yacht Club and CryptoPunks, among others. OpenSea also features permissionless listings, so there's no entry criteria or censorship, which makes onboarding much easier for up-and-coming artists. OpenSea has a huge array of asset types, split into key categories like art, music, sports, or trading cards. It has a number of user-friendly features as well, allowing you to filter through each collection by category, price, status, rarity, or by which blockchain it sits on. You can search through some collections like the Bored Apes by physical or artistic attributes like hats, eyes, fur, or background pattern. OpenSea is well-funded through a network of VC firms and angel investors, including the Dallas Mavericks owner and legendary investor Mark Cuban, Alex Ohanan, a co-founder of Reddit, and a number of celebrity investors as well, including Hollywood actor Ashton Kutcher and NBA star Kevin Durant. So how does OpenSea work? In practice, buying NFTs from OpenSea's marketplace works much like buying a physical product from any other marketplace like eBay. The only meaningful difference is that the record record of all NFTs bought and sold on OpenSea is stored on the blockchain, so you only pay a 2.5% transaction fee compared to the 10% or more that you pay on eBay. To upload an NFT to OpenSea, you can use one of several wallets, but most users prefer using MetaMask when buying NFTs from a desktop and Coinbase wallet on mobile. Once you've connected a wallet, hit create and then upload your content. You can then customize it however you want by adding textual traits and different levels, as well as stats, descriptions, and even unlockable content. And of course, you can also pick which blockchain you want to upload your NFT to. You also need to pick which of OpenSea's three supported blockchains you want your NFTs to sit on, Ethereum, Polygon, and Clayton. Keep in mind that by uploading on Polygon, you'll save yourself a bunch of money on gas fees. And if you're looking to buy an NFT on OpenSea, you can first check its purchase history, including how many times it's been sold, who bought it, and for how much. If you're looking to browse, then check out the OpenSea app. So now that we're all caught up on what OpenSea is and how its marketplace works, Let's take a look at where it came from. For OpenSea, the story starts with the meteoric rise of CryptoKitties, a blockchain-based crypto game where you can buy and breed digital cats. The game was an immediate hit, making headlines across the world, and it's widely considered to be the catalyst for NFT's current success. And while CryptoKitties would have been easy to ignore, computer science graduates Devin Finzer and Alex Atala saw immense value where most others did not. But it wasn't actually the game they were interested in. It was NFTs. At the time, NFTs were mostly dismissed as a fad or a minor technical novelty, one not worth paying much attention to and would likely dissolve into obscurity within a few years. Of course, we all know now that NFTs would eventually hit the mainstream just four years later, but developing an NFT marketplace at that time was undoubtedly a revolutionary and pioneering move. Finzer's entrepreneurial journey started in his junior year in Brown University. He, alongside co-founder Dylan Field, started a social class registration platform that allows students to pick their classes and see what their friends were signing up for. 
While the platform gained little traction, CourseKit kickstarted both of their journeys building startups. Dylan Fields went on to be a CEO of Figma, a design platform valued at $10 billion. Fincer went on to work as an engineer at Pinterest and subsequently founded several other projects after Pinterest, one of which, Claim Dog, was acquired by Credit Karma. While working at Credit Karma, Fincer fell into the rabbit hole which is crypto, and he decided to leave to build a business in crypto with Alex Atala, a CS graduate from Stanford. But before building OpenSea and embarking on their NFT adventure, Fincer and Atala worked together on another crypto-related project called Wi-Fi Coin. Wi-Fi Coin lets you earn crypto by offering access to your router, as well as purchase access to other users' networks. It was an interesting and innovative project which the pair successfully pitched to Y Combinator, a well-known startup accelerator, and presented the project at the 2017 TechCrunch Hackathon. But after CryptoKitty's sensational success, Fincer and Atala realized that the market for NFTs could explode, and accordingly they put a stop at their work at Wi-Fi Coin and immediately moved all in on OpenSea. The founders rapidly developed a working prototype which launched in beta form around a month later in December. In January the following year, the founders managed to raise $120,000 in pre-seed funding and a further $2 million in the platform's first official seed round in May. Unfortunately, OpenSea didn't quite live up to its founders' lofty goals and expectations. Well, not straight away at least. So by March of 2020, OpenSea's team had grown but only to five members, including the founders. As the COVID-19 pandemic plunged the world into lockdown, Atala began working from his parents' basement in Colorado, and OpenSea looked perilously close into folding. And by the end of June, the global NFT markets hadn't picked up much, achieving only $13.7 million in sales. OpenSea's prospects started looking really dire. At the time, OpenSea was pulling in a little over $28,000 per month, and Finzer and Atala agreed that if they couldn't double their platform's profits by September of 2020, they would either sell the platform or shut the doors to the OpenSea marketplace forever. Fortunately for OpenSea's dynamic duo, the second half of 2020 proved largely profitable, and for the global NFT markets. The latter half of 2020 recorded $81 million in NFT sales, a nearly six-fold increase on the $13.7 million recorded during the first half of the same year. Finzer and Atala exceeded their target of doubling their profits by September, and by the time Joe Biden was declared the winner of the US election in November, OpenSea was a booming business. In fact, OpenSea's sales had increased enough that by March the following year, the project won $23 million in funding to expand and improve its services, size up its marketing efforts, and grow its team. Helped along by Beeple's record-breaking $69 million NFT sale in March of 2021, OpenSea started bringing in $220 million in average monthly fees, quite an improvement on the $28,000 the platform made during comparable months from the previous year. For the rest of 2021, OpenSea's profits continued soaring skyward, as did its funding, and the team raised $100 million through a funding round led by Anderson Horowitz, a revered VC firm which valued OpenSea at $1.5 billion. Since July of 2021, OpenSea has grown to $13 billion, an eightfold increase in as many months. The platform also boasts 50,000 daily users, 600,000 registered users, and is averaging between $100 and $200 million per day in sales. OpenSea's founders, Finzer and Atala, are now reaping their benefits of their hard work. The pair count on themselves among the first NFT billionaires, and Finzer is ranked among the 19th Fortune magazine's Nifty 50. But while its profits soared, OpenSea has faced a string of controversies. Back in March of 2020, when OpenSea was floundering with just 4,000 monthly users and a handful of employees, nobody paid too much attention to the platform's inner workings and company ethos. But as the company has seemingly taken over the NFT space, its 600,000 users have been putting the marketplace under the microscope, and they haven't always liked what they found. For instance, a few Mondays back, a number of extremely valuable NFTs started selling for way below the minimum asking price. One dismayed owner woke up and saw their Bored Ape NFT sold for just a few thousand bucks without their permission, and was later sold for a tenfold in profit. When speaking to Fortune Magazine about the incident, he said, I actually physically pinched myself. The saga was dramatic for the NFT community and heartbreaking for NFT owners who were caught out, especially considering Justin Bieber recently paid just shy of $1.3 million for his Bored Ape. OpenSea explained that the problem wasn't caused by a bug in its platform or a fault in its smart contracts. The issue was actually caused by previous unfulfilled auction listings at lower prices, which were never deleted by the NFT owners. In response to the uproar on Twitter, the OpenSea team sent out an email to the affected community members and pointed to the marketplace's FAQ section, which recommends users get rid of any inactive listings, implying that the sellers were at fault for not deleting their previous
previous listings. Within a matter of hours, OpenSea faced a tidal wave of criticism on social media and was accused of blaming creators, traders, and users for the debacle. Pretty quickly, the platform agreed to compensate users who lost money through the confusion and has so far paid out in excess of $1.8 million. In further effort to resolve the matter, OpenSea also announced a new system which lets you cancel all of your unfulfilled contracts on your NFTs in bulk in a single transaction and should prevent this issue from reoccurring. Sadly, this is only where OpenSea's most recent trouble began. Later that same week, OpenSea also decided to put limitations on its shared storefront, which allows artists and creators to create and sell NFTs of their work without any technical knowledge. OpenSea again faced a furious backlash and was forced to reserve its position by the end of the same week. Explaining the move on Twitter, OpenSea said, we originally built our shared storefront contract to make it easy for creators to onboard into the space. However, we've recently seen a misuse of this feature increase exponentially. Over 80% of the items created with this tool were plagiarized works, fake collections, and spam. Now, obviously the fact that of all the NFTs created through OpenSea, four out of five of them are either copied, fake, or just spam is troubling enough. But it was quickly pointed out that up until this announcement, OpenSea had kept curiously quiet about its plagiarism problems. And while rampant plagiarism is hardly news to the NFT space, people are seriously concerned that OpenSea has been profiting from people duplicating and selling artwork that they didn't create on its marketplace. And perhaps OpenSea's biggest controversy so far came in September of last year, when several social media sleuths unearthed incontrovertible evidence that the platform's head of product, Nate Chastain, was using a collection of undeclared wallets to front-run NFT drops before OpenSea listed them on its featured section on its homepage. Finzer sadly confirmed the controversy in a blog post, adding that he found the saga to be incredibly disappointing, and an example of behavior which did not live up to OpenSea's values. Developers and employees at OpenSea have since faced much stricter rules about which NFTs they can and can't buy from the marketplace they run. Still, some in the community believe that the saga underlines the pressing need for better regulation in the NFT space and more protection for end users. OpenSea's most recent controversy took place a few Saturdays ago, when 30 or so users woke up to find their NFTs missing from their wallets. And by the end of the day, rumors of thousands of missing NFTs were spreading online, and even a few bored apes were reported missing. Fortunately for OpenSea, it quickly became apparent that the hack wasn't the result of a breach to its website, but was actually caused by a phishing attack. It turns out that all of the users who were missing NFTs had clicked on a link in an email asking them to migrate their listings to a new smart contract, which allowed the hacker to take control of their NFTs. Finzer has since said that some of the NFTs have been returned, and so far seems that the hackers only managed to steal around 250 tokens. As you can see, OpenSea is no stranger to controversy, and yet it remains by far the leading marketplace serving the NFT space, and even won $300 million in funding in January. But can it maintain its momentum? The global NFT space has grown from a little talked about niche into one of the most exciting and dynamic areas of emerging technology, largely thanks to Finzer and Atala's efforts. Without those two, who knows where the NFT space would be today? And while the NFT sector's rapid expansion has obviously served OpenSea extremely well, with more money for OpenSea comes more competition. There are already 50 plus NFT marketplaces snapping at OpenSea's heels, all of which could challenge OpenSea's dominance by offering lower fees, different features, or a decentralized service. Numerous decentralized platforms airdrop tokens to OpenSea users in a bid to draw them into their marketplaces, with the most successful being looks rare. Yet, given OpenSea's current dominance over the NFT space, we can't envision a world in which OpenSea isn't at the center of every NFT, at least for now. But will it be remembered like AOL or Netscape as a strong starter that couldn't keep its hold over the entire market? Or will OpenSea continue dominating and eventually becoming the Amazon of NFTs? Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Hey, did you like that video? Yeah, well, make sure to check out these other videos here because if you like this video, you're probably gonna like these videos. So what are you doing? Go check out those videos and like and subscribe while you're at it. So yeah, check them out.